ensure accurate and repeatable pH measurements, the condition of a pH electrode must be monitored frequently. Before proceeding with checking the pH electrode condition, the user will need a pH meter with a millivolt option, such as the HI3222, to ensure that the pH electrode glass is hydrated and clean, and fresh buffer solutions. pH electrode condition is defined by two characteristics, the offset of the electrode and the slope of the electrode. Let's begin by determining the offset of our electrode, in this case the HI1131B. To determine the offset, check the millivolt reading of the pH electrode in a pH 7 buffer. An acceptable offset for a functioning electrode is plus or minus 30 millivolts. We see that our HI1131B has an offset of negative 13.5 millivolts. Next, we need to determine the slope of the pH electrode. In order to calculate slope, you need two values, so we need to take a second millivolt reading using a second different buffer. In this case, we will use pH 4 buffer. However, any other buffer can be used. Our second millivolt value using a pH 4 buffer is 157.9 millivolts. Once you have millivolt readings from two different pH buffers, you can determine the slope of a pH electrode by dividing the change in millivolts over the change in pH units, which equals our slope 57.13 millivolts per pH unit change. The response of a glass sensing pH electrode is based on the Nernst equation and has a theoretical slope of 59.16 millivolts per pH unit change at 25 degrees Celsius. The final step for determining the condition of your electrode is to make sure that these values produce an acceptable slope range. The acceptable range for a good electrode is between 85 and 105 percent slope. The slope of our electrode comes out to 57.13 millivolts per pH unit change. We then divide this actual slope by the theoretical slope as defined by the Nernst equation, 59.16, to determine the slope percentage. The slope percentage of this HI1131B is 96.6%, which falls in the acceptable range of 85 to 105%. If your pH electrode meets both these criteria, then you have a functioning electrode and you can proceed with calibration and measurement.